Okay, right, so welcome back to this next video in which we're discussing uh, mitosis within the cell cycle. Right, so we've discussed um, the prophase of mitosis in which uh, the MCDK or this cyclin BCDK1 complex causes uh, the chromatin to condense into the chromosomes and it appears, as I discussed at length, as these X sort of shapes, because you have two sister chromatids joined together. So each one of the 46 chromosomes is not just a singleton anymore. It's joined to an utterly identical copy of itself, the copy that it made in the S phase. And they're joined at this center portion known as the uh, centrosome. And in fact, I should just discuss this a little bit. So let's discuss the structure of these sister chromatids here. This is going to become very important later on. So. Basically, um, each one of these um, two portions is a whole chromosome. So this is a chromosome. This is one of the chromosomes here. And then this is the other sister chromatid, if you like. Right. Uh, and then at the center, this point that's joining them together is what's known as the centromere. The centromere. OK, so centromere. Right, and another important thing is to say that there's loads of links between these two sister chromatids, which are holding them together, basically, like so. And these links are what are known as cohesins, so they're a protein, and they're called the cohesin protein. So the two sister chromatids are held very tightly together uh, by the centromere and by the cohesins that are uh, between each of their arms, like so. Okay, and we'll discuss these uh, sister chromatids in a bit more detail later. So, uh, the next phase of mitosis, then, is the pro-metaphase. Okay, so a cell is going to go from prophase to this next stage, which is called pro-metaphase. And in pro-metaphase, what's going to happen is uh, that the nuclear envelope is going to disintegrate, basically. It's going to retract. Um, so, it's, um, it's going to you're going to basically break down the nucleus. You're going to just have these uh, sister chromatids in the, uh, in the cytoplasm of the cell, basically, and uh, no longer um, in the nucleus, because the nuclear envelope has broken down. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, here is the outer membrane of the cell. So, this is the cell membrane here. And now the nuclear envelope, basically, has broken down. Okay? And that means that you've got these sister chromatids now in the cytoplasm rather than uh, in the nucleus. So here are um, 23 pairs of homologous sister chromatids, if you like. So this will continue down to 23, etc. And we've still got our uh, mitotic spindles here, okay, which are all linked at this uh, spindle pole or mitotic pole, that what you want to call it. And you've got two of these. Uh, spindle poles or mitotic poles, uh, one at each side of the cell. Okay, so the nuclear envelope breaks down in prometaphase, and that is completely and utterly driven again by our old friend. Our cyclin B C D K one complex drives this nuclear envelope breakdown, and it does it basically by phosphorylating certain proteins in the uh, nuclear envelope. Uh, which cause it to then uh, break down. Okay, so CD, uh, the MCDK drives uh, prometaphase as well as we saw it drives uh, prophase as well. Right, now what's going to happen is that uh, these spindles are going to start connecting to what are known as the kinetochores of these sister chromatids. Okay, so you're going to start getting um, chromosomal, um, chromosomal capture, basically, which is this process of spindles binding to the sister chromatids. So you're also going to get chromosomal capture. And I want to talk in a bit more detail about chromosomal capture, because this is going to be very important when we come to talk about what initiates uh, anaphase of mitosis. Okay, so a bit more on these centromeres and these sister chromatids then. To the lateral sides of the centromere, okay, to this lateral side of this centromere, what you have is a region known as the kinetochore. 
Okay, so you have two kinetochores, one on each of the two sister chromatids. So basically, um, these kinetochores are the portions where these, um, these spindles can uh, bind to. So, uh, unfortunately, I've drawn that, drew, covered that in blue as well. So if we look at one of these spindles here, that can basically come in here and bind to the kinetochore of... Um, of the sister chromatid. And indeed, you're going to have to get one spindle from this side binding to this, um, this kinetochore here, or the, well, to the um, right hand kinetochore of the right hand sister chromatid. And you'll get another spindle um, basically um, binding to the kinetochore on the other chromatid. And this is how you're going to pull these chromosome, uh, these sister chromatids apart. The spindles, the mitotic spindles, are going to pull them apart. And in order for that ever to happen, you need a, a mitotic spindle to attach to one of them and a mitotic spindle from the other mitotic pole uh, to uh, attach to the other um, sister chromatid. And indeed, this is what happens. You have these two kinetochores, one on each of these two sister chromatids. So there's a kinetochore here and a kinetochore also here. Okay, so this is a kinetochore. Right, and uh, a uh, mitotic spindle from the other side will come and bind to this kinetochore here. Okay, so that process of mitotic spindles binding to the kinetochores of the sister chromatids, that is known as chromosomal capture. And again, the process of chromosomal capture is um, dependent on cyclin B, C, D, K, 1. So the process of these uh, mitotic spindles actually extending out towards um, the uh, kinetochores of the sister chromatids, that's dependent on CDK1, uh, um, sorry, cyclin B, CDK1 complexes. And basically the way it does it is it phosphorylates certain proteins associated with the microtubule. So it associates, uh, it phosphorylates uh, things such as my, uh, mito, micro, microtubule associated proteins, known as MAPs. So this stands for micro tubule associated proteins and it also um, it also phosphorylates um, proteins known as microtubule associated motor proteins and this this phosphorylation of these types of these proteins which are associated with the microtubules is very important in uh, causing the microtubules which are in these mitotic spindles basically um, to uh, catch the chromatids basically Okay, right, so the next phase of the cell of mitosis then is um, a phase known as um, metaphase. Okay, so in metaphase, what happens is all of the, um, all of the um, sister, sister chromatids start aligning down the center of the cell. Okay, so let me show metaphase. So in metaphase, what you get is... Uh, all the, firstly, all of the um, sister chromatids start attaching to, um, to mitotic spindles. So let's show that first. Okay, so they all attach to mitotic spindles and they also all align down the center like this. So in the last picture, the way I was denoting it was I had these, um, these two sitting alongside each other, and that was merely because these were the two homologous chromosome ones. However, that's not what actually happens in, um, in uh, real life, because otherwise you're at risk, basically, of pulling. The way I've drawn it, it looks as though we're going to split like this. That's not the way we're going to split. We're going to take, we're going to split each sister chromatid. So basically what's going to happen is all of these 46 um, sister chromatids are all going to align down one line. And basically the um, mitotic spindles, which are made up of microtubules, are going to pull those sister chromatids apart. And they're going to pull one of the sister chromatids this way and the other sister chromatid that way. And that way, each of the daughter cells is going to get a copy of every single one of the 46 chromosomes. Okay, so all 46 of these, this goes on all the way down to the 46th one, is going to, are going to align uh, down the centre of the cell, basically. And what you're going to get is you're going to get these mitotic spindles, which are attached to these spindle poles over here. 
they're going to link up basically with every single kinetochore of um, the sister chromatids on their side anyway. So this one is not going to link with the kinetochore on this side. And this other mitotic pole on the other side is going to link with the, oh dear, this pen's running out, is going to link with the, um, the um, kinetochores of the other side basically. And in this way, each of these mitotic poles or spindle poles is going to be attached to a sister chromatid of every each one of the 46 chromosomes, basically. Okay, so let me label this up. So this is a spindle pole here, and you have two of these spindle poles, one on each side, uh, and this basically is the axis along which the cell is going to divide. So here's the other spindle pole. Okay, and in metaphase, we get all of the sister chromatids aligned down the center of the cell. So sister chromatids align down the center of the cell. Sister chromatids here. Okay, right. And as we can also see, all of these mitotic spindles have attached to the kinetochores of um, to the kinetochores of the um, sister chromatids, basically mitotic spindles. So we've had chromosomal capture, and that basically is the metaphase of mitosis. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a very important checkpoint known as the spindle assembly checkpoint. And this basically is uh, there to ensure that you have connected a uh, mitotic spindle to every single kinetochore, basically. Because if you haven't connected this up perfectly, i.e. if this spindle pole hasn't attached uh, a mitotic spindle to every single sister chromatid here, then you may well misdivide this basically, i.e. one of these two daughter cells might get the wrong number of chromosomes. One might get too many and one might get too few. So it's really important that every spindle pole has attached itself to one of the sister chromatids of all 46 chromosomes and has attached itself to only one. Okay, so what follows is a process known as the spindle assembly checkpoint. And before the next phase of, the, um, uh, of mitosis can occur, you have to get past the spindle assembly checkpoint. Okay, right. So, uh, the spindle assembly checkpoint is often abbreviated to SAC, or SAC for short. And in order to study it, we need to draw a picture of these, uh, of these sister chromatids. So let's draw a nice big picture of our sister chromatids. So here we have a sister chromatid zoomed up nice and large, basically. Okay, now so far what I've told you is that down the center we have something known as the centromere here. Centromere. And then to the, each side of the centromere, you have what's known as the kinetochore. So on this side and this side, you have a kinetochore. So each of the sister chromatids has its own kinetochore. So here's the kinetochore corresponding to this sister chromatid, and here's the kinetochore corresponding to this sister chromatid. So we have two of these kinetochores. So this is a kinetochore. Okay, now what I did not tell you before was that the kinetochore has a protein bound to it which is displaced when the spindle pole, uh, sorry, the spin mitotic spindle binds to it, okay? And uh, this um, protein that is bound to um, the kinetochore is known as the mitotic, um, check, uh, mitotic uh, checkpoint complex. So this is the mitotic checkpoint complex which is bound to the kinetochore. And it's not just this kinetochore that's got one. This kinetochore will have one as well. And in fact, every kinetochore of all 40, uh, in fact, of all 92 sister chromatids is going to have a um, mitotic checkpoint complex. Now, the mitotic checkpoint complex is often abbreviated to MCC. Now, so before the um, mitotic spindles have bound to the kinetochores, all of these kinetochores have this mitotic checkpoint complex bound to them. And basically, the mitotic checkpoint complex 
in turn binds to another protein. So it binds to another protein, and this other protein is known as CDC20. And the mitotic checkpoint complex can only bind to CDC20 when it itself is bound to the kinetochore of the cystochromatid. Now, when uh, these, um, these junctions between the mitotic spindle and the kinetochore form, so let me draw this happening. So let's say we are now forming, so let me draw the cystochromatid again. Let's say we have now formed an um, adhesion between a mitotic spindle and um, a kinetochore. So let's say here's our centromere again, here's our kinetochore, and now basically we have formed a connection with this mitotic spindle here. So let's say this is a mitotic spindle here. Now, basically, when you form this connection with this mitotic spindle, the um, mitotic checkpoint complex is displaced, okay? So the mitotic checkpoint complex is displaced. It can no longer bind there, basically, okay? And uh, when it's displaced, uh, it can no longer bind CDC20. So CDC20 is released. So here comes CDC20 off here. Now, CDC20, when it is free, now goes off and activates something known as the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome. And you must not confuse this uh, protein with adenomatous polyposis coli of the beta catenin destruction complex. Okay, so here is our anaphase promoting complex. Okay, so this is the anaphase promoting complex. And it's also, its old name was the cyclosome, anaphase promoting complex. And its old name was the cyclosome. Okay, and basically the reason I said that you mustn't confuse it with adenomatous polyposis coli of the Wnt um, beta catenin pathway is because this is often denoted A P. C, and then they put a slash C, but don't confuse that for adenomatous polyposis coli. Okay, the slash C tells you that we mean the anaphase promoting complex. Okay, so let's give the anaphase promoting complex a colour. Let's have it in pink. Okay, so here's the anaphase promoting complex. Now, so we've seen that in order to get the anaphase promoting complex active, you need this CDC20, basically, to be free. And in order to have the CDC20 free, you need the mitotic checkpoint complex to have been displaced from the kinetochore. Okay, so you need all of these uh, mitotic spindles to have attached to all of the kinetochores of the cystochromatids in order to get the anaphase-promoting complex slash cyclosome to become active. And we'll discuss what the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome does in the next video.